And shalom everyone, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the House of the Lost Sheep of Israel, also with King James Bible University. Before we actually get cranked up, I do want to let people know, um, after the teaching, if you look in the description under the YouTube section, you look in the description, you'll see where we're going to be doing the fulfillment for the um, Sovereign King James Bible. Actually, I'm going to have two of them up today. And um, based on my uh, ignorance on how it was set up, I didn't know. But it's actually easy to get to a lot of things I didn't know, but I'll be doing it today. However, I will be doing the fulfillment. So people want to see the difference based on what's happening. As with the teachings of Romans, I'll be using the books. But what we're doing is um, through here, we're going to be allowing about 100 of the digital books going to be going through for $59 besides the 89 that everyone else is selling them for. So if you want to be part of that, then, you know, some people can send it in through the cash app or you come into the back area, which is afterwards, which you can see in the description. And as well as some people always forget to put their emails in there. So we do have another link where you, you fill out a form. And you basically just going to put your name and your cash app name to where we can fulfill it. And one of the reasons I'm trying to do that today, I want to make sure everybody who make the purchases, they fulfill right at the same time we're doing it. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing that. And other than that, um, as I said, we, we have um, about 100 of them we're going to release at the $59. In this, yeah, but if you go actually on... Um, I know on uh, Amazon, Amazon have them for $89. And you can actually get it right now today for 59 So that'll be up to you for the choice that you want to make. And then uh, also we have on Lulu, we'll be doing the same thing. But Lulu will be the same as Amazon as well as everyone else. So those are the choices that um, we try to make some, you know, alleviate some issues there to where we'll be able to do that today. However, we got to deal with something else where we was going through Paul and Paul is, he's really digging into us. The more chapters he go into, the more he get more serious with us. And he's getting more and more deeper into the scriptures and, and convicting us on what we was doing wrong. So that's something we have to deal with and there's no way around it. So as I said, you're going to see the two sides because don't think it's two different types of um, Sovereign King James Bible on the ends. They, one is the same, but they can set up to where they can be almost in, you know, do you see where you see side by side and you'll see one where it's just set up in a single. But don't think that these are two different books. They're the same book. So don't say, well, I want to get this one this way. Or I want to get that one that way. It's the same book, but it's just based on how you decide to set it up. So we're going to get into this and we're going to look at this with Paul and find out what was going on here because Paul is saying some things that was pretty serious here. And he, we left off at, um, at seven and 11, but we want to really pay attention to which was going on here. Cause here we using the online Bible, but it's, but we're going to kind of always leave this pinpoint. It says, in the commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. And, and if you meditated on this this past week, if you meditated on it, if he found which, the commandment which was ordained to life and he found to be unto death, he was living according to the flesh. That, that's, if you meditated on it all week, that's the only answer would have came up in your head. Because the life that you're living is already going to be found unto death. Because all flesh is going to die. So if you live in anything according to the flesh, I promise you, your reward is going to be death. That's a promise. And we have a lot of people have that mix up. And that's why we're doing and, and taking our time and going through here. And yeah, we're making sure we, we understand what's happening. But the main part is when we get to verse 11, 
verse 11, he started doing a windfall where we're going to find out a whole lot of stuff through here. And it says clearly, it says, for sin, for sin, taking occasion by the commandment, taking occasion by the commandment, deceived me and by it slew me. This is where it's getting real serious. Because for the clear experience of the commandment, which was death to all flesh and life is that lives separated from a lifestyle that can be really complex in many ways. But due to the according of, of flesh, many will be deceived by the very thing that they believe in, by the very thing that they believe in. And, and how can we find this out? We're going to look at some examples and some experiences here, which we're going to find out because when you've been deceived, when you've been deceived, it, it, it get you. So we're going to look at James chapter two. We're going to look at verse 11, James two and 11. Let's go over here to 11. We're going to look at it. So we want to see here in actually I'm going to highlight that real quick so we can see what we're talking about here. So we really just dealing with James chapter 11. We're going to go into 12, but it's saying, for he that said, do not commit adultery. Actually, I'm going to untight like that because I want to show you, I want to separate something to show you something. He said, for he that said, do not commit adultery, said also, do not kill. And I want you to understand how flesh should do this. Flesh should do this. Because it says, now if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou kill, thou art become a transgressor to the law. See, because they, they picking and choosing what's going on. And this is the problem we have today. This is the very problem we have today. So the same as men teaching, don't do this or don't do that, but they doing something else. They doing something else that is contrary to the law. They, you have many people. See, one of the better things is you have people, by the way, tell you they won't kill because they know they better go to jail. So they won't kill because they clearly know they won't go to jail because if they killing, they know it's a guaranteed. If they caught, they go into jail. But they will commit adultery. They will commit adultery. In one second, one second here. So we want to understand really what's going on here in, in everything to where we want to see when you commit an adultery, but you feel you don't kill, you okay. And that's not the truth. <clears throat> so either way, you become a transgressor to the spirit of God. Cause he, he never changes. He never changed. But verse 12, he, he gets into more on what he's saying. So, cause he's saying, so speak ye and so do that ye shall be judged by the law of liberty. So we know clearly here, this is clearly talking about teaching. So you're going to be judged by your teachings by the law of liberty. That's, that's what he's telling you right up front. Because many of us done sit there and we done learn under the law of liberty. Picking and choosing which laws we want to follow. Picking and choosing what laws we not going to follow. As soon as we want to do the law of liberty, the first thing we'll do is, we're going to tell you what, <clears throat> he cleaned this so we can eat this. We're going to tell you what, he forgives us for that so we can continually do that. That's what you was taught. And you're going to be taught that, and that's what the law of liberty is. Every time we have people telling you what you can do, the same as they'll tell you with, the day you worship on, they say, well, every day is the Sabbath day. 
and it don't say that. The Bible don't say that, but he says that every day is the Sabbath day to him. These are the things we go through. And what will happen is we let people beguile us on, on these things and, and, and they introduce all types of doctrines that we'll get to get in trouble on. This is what Paul is letting you know. In verse 11, it's saying, for sin, taken occasion by commandment, deceived me and it slew me. But these commandments is done by men. These commandments is clearly done by men. And we're going to go in here <clears throat> and I want to go into Colossians. Actually, we're already in Colossians. We got to, we're going to go into 218. And, and he's telling you something that's really up front here. He says, let no man. And you need to look at the importance of this. here. The importance of this here. Let no man. Beguile you. This, I don't know how we can stress it enough, how I can make it point out enough, but this, this right here is going to get 98% of the people put in hell. Just that right there, because no matter what we're going to be, we're going to listen to someone to beguile you, to, to tell you something that you can clearly see in the Bible. However, as you can clearly see it, they're going to be able to talk you out of it. No, it don't mean that. No, it don't mean that. It mean this. No, that don't mean that. That means this. He says he gave gifts unto men, and you have women out there saying, well, that's interchangeable. Men, M-E-N, that's interchangeable. That can be a man or a woman. On those alone, you letting man, M-A-N, mankind, man or woman, be call you. They'll call themselves whatever God calls them to be, and they'll use that. And they're going to be God people. Not only they going to hell, but they're they going to take people with them. Because the main problem is when you're worshiping, and being beguiled, we're going to see what happens. It says, you of your reward in voluntary humility and worshiping of angels, worshiping of messengers. you worshiping a messenger. You're going to where people are beguiling you, and these are nothing but messengers, and they done prop themselves up as angels to what you're going to be worshiping. This is why we give them money. Uh, uh, you do all these things and propping them up. Thinking that you done done something for them. Intruding into those things which he have not seen vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind you see you see how he's how he's doing this in colossians this is paul see, it ain't changed because this is the thoughts of paul on how he sees everything in the spirit that was put on him but many of us going to get caught up going to get caught up on this alone you you have people where they sit there and they, they do those super chats and you have people just giving them money, giving them money, giving them money, giving them money, saying they pushing the, 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 the doctrine for it. How? How? It makes no sense. But it's telling you more in verse 19. It says, and not holding the head from which the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increase with the increase of God. So not only you're going to take hold of Christ, 
but the knowledge being brought to us to increase the knowledge of God, but most of us not going to do that regardless. Most of us not going to do it regardless because that's what Paul is talking about. And we're going to look at verse 20 and it says, wherefore, if ye be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world. <laughs> See, this, now we got, we got problems. Why? Because he's clearly telling you here. If we be dead with Christ by the rudiments, the rudiments, the rudiments, this here, actually, we're going to tell you what. You know, some people, they can do this. You can add it later. And you want to put this here. You want to, you just want to make sure when they, when you, when you, when you look at that, when you see this here and you want to see what that is and you can click there and you can see rudiments and you can also put principles. And wait a minute, principles. Oh, I P L E S. <clears throat> So we got that clear. So when you look at that, you can know clearly know what that's saying. So it, from the elements and principles of this world, that's what he's saying. From the elements and principles of this world. Because we are subjected to the what? To the ordinances that are here. And actually, actually he's saying it right here anyway. It says... And though and through living in the world are ye subject to ordinances. You subject to ordinances. And as I'm doing it, I, I I'm I have a bad habit where I mark up stuff and I this is what I do regardless. So I'm just doing it as I'm going. But the main thing is uh, these ordinances is offerings. <clears throat> So I'm just putting it there. That's, that's something I just do. So that's why I'm just marking that up. So now we know, so we, you're subject to offerings. And what you're going to offer up is by commandment on what they're telling you, which is still going to be unto death. And you doing, you subject to the commandments and subject to the ordinances of sin according to flesh. Are you following me? These are the things we do. And he, and he goes on more because they holding you based on you letting a man, don't let no man beguile you, but based on that, we let men beguile us. Through the elements and principles of life and the offerings that we're doing. He's, he's telling you this right here in scripture. And this is what we do right here in scripture. And this is what we do. Verse 22, it says more. And it says, which are, which all are to perish with using. Exactly the point. You give, you offering money, that's going to perish. You offering of your body, that too will perish. All these things they're telling you, they will promise you they will perish. They're going to perish. That's that's regardless of the point. But we're going to offer those things. And that's the best slogan. The slogan is here. Touch not. Taste not. Handle not. You think that's not a slogan? That's a right out bona fide slogan. To which we we done we done subjected ourselves to. So this is the slogan: "Taste not, touch not," and 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 thinking now that and then it's only approved by the commandments if it's done by that man, because he he tells you this right here, verse twenty two. It says, "Which are which all are to perish with the using after the commandments." and doctrines of men. It's telling you this. He's telling you, you need to donate this. You need to offer this. You need to do this. You need to do that. All of it is going to perish. 
Every bit of it. But the first thing we want to say is what? But if we die with Christ, see, if we be dead with Christ, why in the world you going to be trying to do the rudiments and elements and the principles of the flesh and you did with Christ? You get the point. We, we almost doing contrary things to contrary things. If you did with Christ, then you should be doing nothing by the spirit because you're going to mortify the body. It's common sense there, but most of us, we won't look at it in that way. We have to, we have to sit there and think personally, <clears throat> excuse me, as Paul is speaking to us, this is how Paul breaking this down. But let's look at it a little bit more. We're going to go down to verse 12. It says, wherefore the law is holy. And the commandment is holy and just and good. Now, right there alone through a lot of people, because just like I said, people are going to teach you based on commandments of men. And as I say all the time, it's two laws in the Bible, but you can go to many. The easiest way to find out from your, your own pastors, most people, if you're a Christian or whatever you, th you, you thinking or somebody that got you to come over here and see something. But if you want to see how uneducated your pastor is in the Bible, all you got to do is go up to him and ask them, <clears throat> how many laws in the Bible? They're going to either tell you 10 or they're going to try to run to something else. They're going to say you're 604 and all this stuff or 613. They, they're going to argue back and forth on that. But it's two sets of laws in the Bible. Two. You got a law according to flesh. You have a law according to the spirit. In the law according to the spirit, there is no law. That flesh that you have to pay for. And he says this and he makes it clear. Meaning this. So that's why he says the law is good. Meaning that covenant that, that, God, that God made with you. So we're going to look at this and I'm going to show you what he's talking about. And the same thing. I want to put in, I want to put in a few things. He told me to do it another way. Actually, I might have to put the whole thing in there. I might have to just put the whole thing in there. Yeah, I think I do. But that's okay. I think I did. I no, I didn't. I didn't. D E R. That's what I miss. That's what I miss. Oh, I did this still wrong. I wanted because uh, it's O N. So, but still, it still got me where I need to go. But we want to go to Deuteronomy, and we want to look at Deuteronomy chapter ten. So we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. So verse 12, it says something. And we'll see right here, it says, And now, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? So we're going to see what is actually required of us, what is commanded of us to do. What is it? It's not the offering of the commandments of men. That's what they do. For the rudiments and elements and the principles of this world. That's what they seek for. That's what they subject to those ordinances. Those offerings. That's what those are. That's why we're looking at this over here. When you're looking at this over here, that's why you see the, that's, that's these offerings. And the same thing, these are the elements and the principles, but the things of this world. And they telling you because they are commandments of men. This is the doctrines and the commandments of men that they teach you what you need to be doing. I want you to clearly get this. But these are commandments and doctrines of men. That's what this is. Let no man be, beguile you. Actually, I'm going to highlight this also because I want that all to be together when you look up there. 
So let no man beguile you after the commandments and doctrines of men. That's why I normally highlight my stuff in that way. So now we know. Don't let nobody beguile you based on this. Based on the rudiments, the, the, the elements and principles and the offerings of this world. Because it's telling you the same thing right here. The elements and the principles and offerings of this world. Don't let no man, don't let no man beguile you in this. At all. For that main point. Why? Because there's something required of us. There's something that's clearly required of us. And what's required of us, it tells you over here in the law. It says, now, Israel, what do the Spirit of God require of thee? But to desire the Spirit of thy God to walk in all his ways and to love him and to serve the spirit of thy God with all thy heart and with all thy, and with all thy soul. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. This is clear right here. And it tells you something even clear here, but people always want to sit there and they want to hold themselves as a son. How are you going to hold yourself as a son? And it's saying you're going to serve. Oh, no, I'm a son of God. No, you, you can serve the Lord thy God. And he tells you how you're going to do it. Who? Paul. Paul. Paul breaks all this down when we look at it. And, and we're going to see this right here. We're going to see right, right here what he says right here in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. He says, I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye, you, present your body, not Yahweh's body, not Jesus, not somebody else's body, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable, Unto God, which is your reasonable service. You're going to serve him. And that's how you're going to do it. That's how you're going to do it. Not offering with the rudiments and elements of this world. we just seen that. Not doing that. Offering everything of the world and thinking you get into God. This is, this is what they teach you. Okay, as long as you're giving your offerings, you're giving all your stuff to me for God, and he going to hold it. But as you're giving all your money to him every week, whatever he tells you what to tithe, for whatever reason, he buying cars, he buying houses, he buying boats, he buying planes. So what goes to God? What goes to God? God say you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. For we have let men beguile us and make us offer things that which is contrary to God. And this is why he as he's closing this out, because that's what he's doing right here. He's closing this whole thought out in, in when we get down to past chapter 11, probably past seven, past 11. Because he says more and he gets into it because he, he's just hidden part, parts that he just want to constantly make you go back and think on what on what all what we went through. Even when he started out in verse seven. On chapter seven, verse one, he said, for I speak to them that know the law. So now he's bringing all this back to your memory. But let's look at verse 13. It says, was then that which is good made death unto me? That's a question mark. God forbid. God forbid. We see people teach this in a, in a crazy way. And it ain't going to make no sense. I'm going to read it out and then we're going to tear it down. 
but he said, God forbid. He said, but sin that might appear in that for that sin that it might appear sin worketh death in me by which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. On this verse alone, on this verse alone here, you have a man that be sitting there trying to tell you something contrary to, to what the scripture just said. So to, to look at this and it's saying, but then it was good made death unto me. God forbid. No, it's a switch around. This is the way Paul rolls. It's a switch around on the way Paul rolls. Cause he's going to explain this and we're going to see how he's doing this. See, cause being just being just is going to bring death to what? See, that's what I want you to think of. If you being just with God, death is going to come to what? Automatically. I don't even have to say, tell you what it is. You already know what it is. You know, it's flesh. Flesh is going to die because it's contrary to God. So he's telling you the same thing. So good made death unto me. God forbid. No, because he killed the flesh, but he wanted spirit to live. This is all he's saying. He says, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. You see how he's playing this? See, because flesh is going to bring death to the, to the, to, to the, uh, to sin anyway, because that's the payment for, for sin is death of the flesh. But to bring eternal life, you have to live towards God, towards the spirit. This is all he's saying. So the law is good. That brings life. The same one we see in over here. This was required. That's going to bring life because all flesh is promised to die. It's guaranteed. You can see it daily happening now. But if you love your Lord, thy God in all his ways and love him and serve him and walk in all his ways, you're going to have eternal life, but he's going to come death of the flesh because it's automatic. It was already imputed to us. So only sin works death, which is good. You see that it works death. And it says, which is good because he hates sin and sin is working in flesh. So all works of the flesh is sin. All works of the flesh. <clears throat> and you let it become exceedingly sinful, but you mortify it as it goes. This is all Paul is saying. But most people don't understand how Paul is laying this out. But he says more, <coughs> excuse me, as we go in verse 14, he says, for we know that the law is spiritual. That's the one we, that's the one I'm showing you over here. Right over here. The law is spiritual. But I am carnal, but we are in flesh. This flesh is sold under sin. You see how Paul, you see how Paul carefully laying this out. We're in flesh and flesh is sold to sin. You can't get around it. That's why if, 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 if you didn't sin, flesh, it won't die. I'm going to say that again. If your flesh did not ever sin, it'll be wrong for God for your flesh to die, but it's imputed to you that flesh is sin. So all flesh is going to die. Anybody tell you they never sin. I'm going to show you a liar. See, they, 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 they sit there. They say, well, you know, cause you have people want to hold your house. Jesus, they want to hold him for, for God, which is stupidity alone. They want to hold that alone. So the main thing is, no. So the main thing is, is this. He was in the fleshly body. Who? Yahweh Shai. And 
the spirit of God rested on this man. No sin was found in this man. He didn't sin, but was flesh that he was in sin. 100%. Did he sin? No. But was sin imputed to his flesh? 100%. Why? Because he was flesh. So did he die? 100%. That flesh died. I don't care how we look at this, but people would try to tell you all kind of stupidity. And that's why even when he was walking off and people was crying and well, he's hey, don't don't worry about me. This flesh is going to die anyway. Y'all weep for yourselves. He was seeking eternity. The law is spiritual. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's go here. I want to show you something. Kind of go off here to try to help you out. Um, John 14. We go, oh, wait a minute. I got to put it in chapter. John 14. We're going to go to John 14. And we want, I want to show you something. And this is why we, I want to show you this. Because the same thing is how he's spiritual. But he's telling you he's carnal. He's flesh. So the same thing happened here. <clears throat> Philip, in, in, in John chapter 14, verse 8, Philip said unto, unto him, Lord, show us the Father and it suffice us. Show us the Lord, it, it, it'll suffice us. Why, why, why is he saying that? He's telling you right over here, clear, the law is spiritual. It's not carnal. But if you carnal, you want to see something. Because spirit you can't see. And, and watch how you refine. He said, have I been so long with you, yet has thou not known me, Philip? He that has seen me has seen the Father. How thou sayest then, show us the Father. You see, he's, he's very upfront. But he goes on more. Believest that thou I, that I am in the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me. You see how this is working? You see how this is working? He goes on more. Believe that I am in the Father, in the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Because he's in him. Is any. These are the things we need to really clearly get when he's saying this. When he's saying these things. The law is spiritual, but we're carnal. But if you can love your Lord thy God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, you're going to be fulfilling the law. And you love your neighbor as thyself. This is the problem that most of us never see. It goes on more where we're going to look at you know, Romans, um, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And uh, we want to see there. Romans 8, we're going to go down to 24. In 24, it says this. For we are, <clears throat> excuse me, for we are saved by hope. We are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. If you see hope, that's why he's saying, taste not, touch not, want not. That's why, that's why they say this. Because they're going to show you what you need to be offered. But the law is spiritual to God. The one that's carnal is the one that we push. They're going to show you places where you can come over here and you live over here in this community and we can be all to God. Come on, let's go live in the wilderness. We can all be to, to God. Come on out here and we're going to be all to God. And many people went out there and they drunk the Kool-Aid. 
there are many people out there right now in places drinking the Kool-Aid. Living under the doctrines and commandments of men. So why do we do this? Because they want to push you a false thought of a safe haven that you can see. And it's not true. If it's a safe haven, you should never, ever, ever run into anything. So if that's your perception and that's your deceiving part, that is rest and doing what they saying is rest in their own mind, then that makes you a more unwise person. That's what Paul's saying. They're going to show you carnal things, but then you sold under those carnal things in the flesh. And most people won't think so. That's why Paul is sitting there holding you to this because he, he's telling you everything is under the rudiments, the elements and the principles under flesh. According to this world, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Our favorite place to go right now. We want to go, we want to go over here. We're going to go right back over here to chapter five. We're going to look at something as we normally do. It says, now the works of the flesh are manifest. They may known here. Which of these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy, and murder, and drunkenness, rivalry, and such like. And such like. These are works of the flesh. Works of the flesh. Being sold under sin. This is why we, 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 when we do these things, we think we're doing something right. And doing it 100% wrong. As he hones in, he goes into verse 15. It says this more. For that which I do, I allow not. For that I would, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. Most people don't even get that. But we're going we're gonna to explain it. We're going to explain it and show you the differences of what, what he's talking about. Because the difference between the two is the reason he wrote this for it. See, because the things of the flesh, he chose not of them. But the things he hate is the things he did. But to correct himself, you go right there in verse 16 and you see it. You see it. You see it. Because he said, if, if what? If I then do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. He's clear. He knows, see, he know what he's saying. But most people are going to sit there and keep saying that he's he consenting to things that is not good, which is the things of the flesh. And that's not what he said. See, he consent to the law of good. The law according to the flesh is bad. That's why people will be so confused why he says this. But verse 15, we'll see it again. He says, for which I do for which I do, for that which I do, according to the flesh, what do you say? I allow not. You see, you starting to see the problem. This is the problem when 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 you want to go through here and really dissect what's going on, and we have in people teaching contrary to what he's actually saying. Cause they're going to sit there and say, well, he, things he don't want to do. He, he just do it. They, they ain't, Paul didn't say none of that. None of that. He didn't, he didn't say, you don't see, you don't even see it now. Cause we, we, we dissecting it. And now you see, he didn't say that. But watch this. 
for what I would, for what I would. But the problem is this. The problem is this right here. There's one little word right here. I should have put it over here to where I could have put some other things to it. But what I would. What do would mean? For what I would. See, this is the problem when we come to the England language that is written in. And we need to understand what it's actually saying. Not where we having people here in America where we like to sit there. We think our butt don't stink and it do. And we like to change what words mean. Not only in the Bible, but everywhere. Not only in the Bible, but everywhere. Because we don't even know what would mean. And would, and what he's saying here, he's expressing the reason expressing the fillable things or the things fulfilled. Things that I fulfill that I do not, that I do not. It's all he's saying. But we have a problem with, with language. We have a problem with language, let alone we have people out there trying to teach you first language they speak is English and it's a it's a English ISH it's a flavor of England of the England language so they speaking and we are speaking slang what's worse we like to sit there and put ourselves on a pedestal and then we got the nerve to go try to teach somebody calling ourselves teaching them Hebrew first language English then we're going to go teach Hebrew, first language, English. Then we want to go teach somebody some Greek. And you tell me America's not a fool doing these things. You tell me. You tell me. The same thing here is what he's saying here. He's expressing what he would not do and what he would do, but what he don't control and what he wouldn't do. For what I surely or certainly that do I not. And see, you sit there and you see here for what I would that I do not. And same thing I say, the English language. You can go to almost any Bible teacher and they can't even tell you what that thing semicolon mean. But he pivots. He pivots. And he gonna change something. He says, but, however, what I hate, that I do. So what is he saying? That he do. That he do. Which it takes you clearly. In 16, he's telling you clearly here what he do. 16, he's going to show you why he's saying what he's saying. If then I do that which I would not, I consent. I'm telling you, this is why it's so important. Whenever you see these, 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 these preachers and people, anyone, they just want to run past Paul. I'm telling you, they're going to lead you into the abyss. Because Paul flips and switches I'm talking about more than I've seen anybody in the Bible. He says, if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. The law that is good. He keep referring you back over here. 
to this one over here. That's what he keep referring you back to. But some people are going to refer you to the law they they see in Exodus chapter twenty. And he that's not even that's not even well we'll just leave that alone because I know a lot of people they want to sit there and they probably confused on what's going on here because the consent is telling you consent is telling you what it is he's he says I you can put willing he can agree he yield unto the law that is good that's all he's saying that's all consent actually says and what it actually means that is good so he He's falling to this one. That's what he's saying. But the main part of it is we got to make sure we don't fall to anything contrary to what is being said. Meaning this. As he's going on. See, because he's closing this out. So that's why you're not going to see a lot of other precepts running. Because he's clearing. He's just clearing there making sure we focus on what he. All what he said, all back there, he making sure we clear on what was being said now. Let's look at verse, let's look at verse um, 17. And we're going to go down. It says, now, then I know more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You see how he's catching people up? He said that, so if sin is in him, why is he saying that? Is he not in flesh? Remember he said he's carnal. He said, but he said the law is spiritual, but I'm carnal. He's, you can see right up here. He's telling you this. <clears throat> he's telling you right up front. I'm carnal. I'm flesh. But because you in flesh don't mean you have to think and have a mind of flesh. The mind can be spiritual. Not carnal. That's why he's saying the renewing, the renewing, the renewing of the mind. But if you sold under sin, under the carnal things, then it's all it's all one one of the same. So he says this. He says, "For well, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, again in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing." You see it right over here. Because in flesh, the works of flesh are those. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. So don't let anyone fool you or any man fool you contrary to what the Bible says. Because dwelling in him, he said, no good thing. But we are sold under sin according to flesh because flesh has to pay for the sin, for the sin debt. So that's why flesh has got to die. But he goes on more. He says, for two is present with me, but how to perform that which is good, I find not. You'll never find it in flesh. It's impossible. Impossible. If you knowing that the flesh is bad and the spirit is good, in the flesh is nothing good dwells in it. Even the performances of flesh, you don't see nothing good. And the only thing you can see good is the things that glory is in the flesh. So Christ, actually, let's let's go here. Let's 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 look at some things, and we're gonna see. And we're gonna we're gonna go to Matthew chapter six. Actually, I gotta keep forgetting to put chapter. And I know they're gonna sit there and say, "Man, I told you what you did, what you put in there. We told you what to do, but that's okay." We're going to go to Matthew chapter 6. We're going to look at verse 3. We're going to pick up with verse 3 and uh, verse 4. And it says, But when thou doest alms, this is the craziest thing that you ever see. Arms. I'm going to tell you something. This is, this is what you do is not money. Period. Is doing good deeds. That's what that that's what arms is. When thou doest good deeds, 
That's all it's saying. But you having you having fools out there again, telling hey man, you give arms, you give give money. See right there, arms, it's money, it's money. No, no, it's not. You're doing good deeds. And the world will tell you what's worse about it, because we're gonna make it. And, and I'm, you know, when I say things, we don't ever think I'm not included. I'm including myself, because I, because I've done the same thing. But he says, when I do his arm, if we would have understood the language, we would have caught it. Because he's he is he gonna explain it. Who? Yeah, how was that? He actually explained it. We just overlooked it because we got caught up on money. He says, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth. And your hand's going to do work or stuff. That's how you call it. What, you don't want your left hand to know that, your right, that the left hand went in the pocket and don't want the right hand to know it went in going in the pocket? No. You just don't let, when you when you doing your good deeds, you don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Speaking in the same thing, it says, that thy good deeds, your good deeds, this is what all he's saying, may be in secret. When you're doing something, you ain't got to let everybody know. When you're doing it, it might be money, it might be help, it might be everything else, but this is not saying money. It be good deeds. And he say, be in secret, that the Father may see it in secret himself and shall reward thee openly. So when you're doing a good deed, you're just doing it. You ain't worried about, let me see if people see me doing it so I can get a standing ovation. I'm just doing it. But what happens? We still let, in flesh, dwell in no good thing. We want glory from somebody for doing that deed. That's flesh. Paul saying you, telling you that right there. He's saying, for I know that in me, that is in my flesh, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. I helped grandma get across the street. I want everybody in the world to see me. Actually, I'm going to tell you what, dude, take my camera phone, go over there. I want you to film me as I walk her across the street. And then I'm going to put it on YouTube. I'm going to tell you what, better yet, I'm going to give this man, this homeless man, I'm going to give him $500. I want y'all to film me. I want y'all to film me. We're going to see. We're going to show you it's a real homeless guy. I want y'all to film me. And I'm going to give him the money. Then, then all of us, oh, man, this dude's heart. He got a heart to go. Oh, dude, it's a, he, he's getting his glory. See, that's his glory that we're doing. As we typing, he's getting his glory. He's looking back like, look at me. Look how good I am. Look how good people see me. You can't tell me we don't do it because we do it. Do it is no good thing. But we do it. And we think nothing of it. Film me while I'm doing that. When I'm doing this, film me. Film me. Film me doing it. When I get this money, I want everybody to film me. Boy, man, man, did you, man, did you see how much that man gave in in the offering? Ooh, boy, ooh, boy, man, he, 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 he put a big old stack in there. there ain't no reason that nobody know. But he goes on more. See, but this is why he said, in flesh, because flesh wants the glory of flesh. The glory of flesh is sin. You just think about it. 
But let's move on. Let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Verse 19, it says what? What do it say? It says, for the good that I would, I do not. You ain't going to do that. I want everybody to know what I did. But the evil which I would not, that I do. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's catching you. He's not going to let you get around him, is what Paul is doing. You have people publicizing people to do what? You have people who will go out feeding the poor. They film it. You have people clothing the poor. They film it. You have people giving money. They film it. How good this person are. But what most people don't know. What most people don't know. That's mockery. That's mockery. You providing your glory to mock this person by providing them at their lowest point. You're mocking them. I don't care. You, you're going to have people looking at this and they're going to sit there and they can make any kind of complaint they want. And if you tell them, all you got to do is just give this, shut your mouth and move forward. You're not going to do that. You got some, they want to be down that. But you have some who truly want to do that. They just give and they move on. They move on. And you have somebody else who might know they did that. Just, man, oh man, why you didn't do, you could have, you could have put that on YouTube. Man, you know what that, You come into somebody, you're going to make mockery of them at their lowest point. That's why he says, you have some who truly seeking God. You have some truly not seeking God. They act like they're seeking God, but they're actually not. They want to make sure they get some glory, somehow, of that flesh. But he gets in more. He goes on to more. He, let's go down to it more. It says, now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, but sin dwelleth in me. What is he saying? You see, you see, you see how he keeps switching back and forth. And we, and if you just go past it, we won't really catch what he's saying. So if you continue to do that, but the sin that is in you, then you know, you got the spirit, you got the evil spirit in you. You got the evil spirit in you. So he going to let the hammer down to break it down for us. As he go. He going to let the hammer down and let us understand it. Because this is what he tells you. Verse 21. He hit the hammer down as when he let the hammer down in verse 1 in chapter 7. He says, I find then a law. I find then a law that when I would do good, Evil is present with me. You, I'm, I'm just, I just pause for just, just for that to resonate in your mind. Knowing that sin going to bring death to the flesh. Figure that one out. <laughs> we talk later. You figure that one out. We talk later. Because he's telling you right up front what he's talking about. He says in verse 22, For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. You see how he's blending them two together. He's blending them two together. But he's catching us up. We don't let Paul catch us up. Because Paul knows both laws. Very, 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 
very well. And he's blending them because these people sitting there, they know the laws of the doctrine of men. And Paul is sitting there slapping them with their laws. And slapping them, many of us with the same laws because we holding on to the doctrine of men also. So I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present. No one figured this out yet, have you? I tell you what, can you go anywhere without your flesh? You think about that. Meditate on it. Where can you go without your flesh? We'll move on, but you that's something for you to think about and to meditate on this week. But he goes on more. He says, For I delight in the law of God. After the inward man, which is talking about according to the spirit. He's clear. Verse 23. But I see another law in my members. You see, you see, he's keep flipping back and forth. Warring against the law in my mind. <laughs> I'm telling you. Paul is, I'm talking masterful. When you take the time. And read Paul. It's masterful on what he's done. I'm talking about Yahawashai just cuts you with parables and nobody knows what he's talking about. Unless you truly one of God's. Unless you truly one of God's. Because people will sit there and tell you they understood all of that. And Yahawashai, every time he opened up his mouth, he was speaking a parable. And most people don't even know that. Paul is unraveling those because he understand it. But you see how Paul is talking. He's switching back and forth, but he's masterful in doing it. As long as we take our time, we, we won't get lost. But as soon as we think we can run past Paul because we think we know Paul, we get caught up. So he's telling you right up front. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. He's delighting after the spirit. Don't have nothing to do with the flesh. That's, that's the whole point of Paul. He says, but I see another law in my members warring against the law that is in my mind and bring me into captivity in the law of sin, which is in my members. I'm telling you, Paul, Paul, Paul is, listen, yeah. Let's let's go over, let's go over here. Let's go over here to uh Galatians chapter five, picking up at verse seventeen. I'm telling you, Paul is masterful of doing this. The same thing Paul's saying over here, <laughs> Paul is saying the same thing over here. He say Well, let's start at sixteen. It says, For I say then, walk in the spirit. He delighting after the inward man. That's in the spirit. Ye should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That's those members he's talking about. The lust of the flesh. For the lust of the flesh is against. For the flesh lust is against the spirit, and the spirit. In the in the in the in the against the spirit in the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary to one another. That's what he's telling you about over here. He just he breaks it down different times. So that it, when Paul can understand it this way when you have a man as what Paul you see what Paul doing when he can explain it so many different ways and it's coming out the same way you know Paul completely understands the Bible don't ever forget that when you have a man can sit there and masterfully tell you different ways to where you can see what he's talking about masterful on what he does. That's why you have a lot of people sitting there thinking Paul was a heretic and everything else. They're, they're, they're being hell. Because Paul ain't talking nothing about that. Because two things happen. When they say Paul is that way, God said that his spirit gathered them to where we can know how to get back to him. 
and they got all these letters of Paul in there. So they saying God is trying to do you in. You tell me, do that make sense? But watch this. He said, for I delight in the law and God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members warring against the law in my mind and to bring me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. See, the same thing is, see, Paul being slick, but we just going to catch Paul. We just going to keep catching him. Actually, we can go over here. Um, actually, no, I still need to do this. I want to go to chapter four. The reason I want to go to chapter four, I'm just showing you some stuff where Paul pulling this from. Not technically precepts, but just showing you what Paul doing. So he's telling you right up front. He's telling you right up front. So he want to bring the law of sin, which is in the member, but he want to bring that into captivity. Now, what Paul doing, I'm just showing you what Paul, see, Paul just borrowed this from. I'm showing you what Paul borrowed it from. We're going to go over here to Genesis chapter 4. And why Yahweh was talking to Cain. And what he said to Cain, he said, why art thou wroth? And the main reason Cain was wroth because he accepted his brother's offering, but he didn't accept his. So he says, why is thy countenance fallen? Why do, he said, but he says that if thou doest well, should thou not be accepted? But if that doeth not well, what he says, sin lieth at the door. That's the point. Because watch this. And unto thee shall be his desire, and thou shall rule over him. That's what he's saying over here. He's saying the same thing. This is where Paul got this from. Because we should be ruling over that. We should be bringing sin into captivity and mortifying our flesh. That's where Paul got that from. Paul, I'm talking about extremely rarely ever use his words, but it's just the way his deliverance is. We just don't catch him. But that's where Paul got that from. Not a precept for, for that, but if you want to use it as where he's pulling that from, you can pull that. So same thing if um, you want to do it this way. And let's see, you want to do this and you can sit there, you can add a note and you can just put it like a precept. And you can put in uh, Genesis. Actually, we got Genesis. We want that Romans. But Romans, you want seven. And then you can sit there and put in seven, 23. And that'd be one precept that you'll put there, which you'll probably end up putting many more. You'll probably end up putting many more, but you have it right there. So as soon as people sit there, that's, that dwelleth in me, and you can sit there in Genesis, you can put that over there. You can also put it over there on the other side. So technically, that's technically a lot of times how some people mark up their Bible, but that's literally how I mark mine up. But I'm trying not to really do it. I'm forcing myself really not to do it because literally I just be marking it up because I'm just now really starting to really just going to be used on a regular basis. But he's telling you right here. For I see another law in my members warring against the law in my mind to bring it into captivity, which is law of sin, which is in my members. And he's telling you right there what's going on. For we should be ruling over sin. And the same thing is you can also look at um, Romans chapter uh, 8, verse 13, which it also tell you more so we need to mortify our flesh. But as it goes down in here, we're going to look at verse 4, 24. It says, O wretched man I, that I am who shall deliver me from the body of this death you see, you see what he's saying of the body of the death he's telling you his flesh is going to die he's telling you that right up front who's going to deliver me can't no man deliver you from death can't no man deliver you from death it's impossible That's why he's saying that, what he's saying. That's why he says, I think God through salvation, anointed one, our creator, by sending Christ, the anointed one. So then that 
So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. Flesh is sin. He's mortified that, but he's going to fulfill this over here no matter what. But he's going to let that flesh die because it's because it's sin. And he's saying that and he's saying that for, for, for different reasons. We're going to pull another part that he's doing and we're going to look at John chapter 10. We're going to go down to John chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 17. And he says, this, therefore do my father love me. Why? Because I lay down my life of the flesh that I might take it up again of the spirit he's clear he's clear on what he's talking about he know what he's saying and again no man taketh it from me but I lay down my life I lay it down that I myself I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again so he has the choice all the time to do what he want to do but it's what you want to do is, is the point so let's put in these precepts and then um we're gonna we're gonna get ready to go in the back and do what we was talking about. So what we want to do, we want to go back up, and I'm gonna pull. Make sure if you have your um your uh, your scriptures out to where we're gonna go in here. We're gonna go back through here. So one of the examples here we want to put in uh, James two. 11 and 12 and I want to move this over to where we can get this because just like I said it's not many in here because he's closing this out we're going to use Colossians 2 18 through 22 and he goes on more we got to sit there we want to save that and we want to move down And we're going to move down to 12. And now we got to sit there. We're going to put in Deuteronomy. We're going to look at uh, 10, 12. And we got Romans 12 and 1. And I want you to save that. Well, now we're going to go down and we got to look at a few other things and, um, 14. He's closing this out. We just want to be focused on what he's doing. We're looking at Romans 8 and 24. And we got Galatians 5, 19 through 21. I want you to save that. And we're going to move down again. I just want to make sure that we pinpointing what we were looking at. We got to go down to 18. Chapter verse 18. And we want to get that one. We want to put in Matthew. And we want to put in uh, 6, 3, and 4. And we have that one. And we got to go down to 19. Let me see... Uh, 19, I don't think we have anything anyway. Yeah, we don't. But we want to go into the, down to the last part is in 25. In 25, we, we'll go into, and we're going to click into 25, and we're going to put in John 10 and 17. And with that, you want to save that. Because with that, we're going to, sit there we're going to move back over and and once you have all those in there you're going to close it out to where we'll be picking up next Sunday we're going to go on in chapter 8 but as Paul was hitting on everything and he's pounding in things just for us to meditate on to understand that it's no good thing dwells in flesh so if you're doing things according to flesh we're thinking that flesh is doing good towards us so I want to make those things clear, but then also I want to make sure that um, 
as we finish it out, we do have a uh, Deacon Micah. He will be doing um, the uh, the the Preceptor Academy this this afternoon and some um, this evening. And now, what I will be doing, if you look down in the um, the description area, everybody, like I said, I made one earlier, and we're making one now. But it might not be that many once we get back there. But if um, that Sovereign King James Bible they have it's in a digital format if you want to get it right now i know it's 89 dollars on 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 um amazon but right now you can get it through preset mastery through the cash app for 59 dollars now we will be fulfilling those actually simultaneously when we go into the back today which i'll be going back there in a little bit and the link to get back there to the to the zoom area is in the description you click on it, it's gonna pull you automatically into the into the into that zoom area, as well as if you just have a zoom and you don't want to click on the link, you got the meeting ID and the passcode there. Now the quickest way to do it is um, once you do that, to where we don't have to go back and forth with emails, it has a form that you can click on where it's in to complete the form, and then we can go in there, we can match your cash app with the um, with the with the with the email and then we can email the the um, the EPUB to you. Now one of the main things is most people with Apple phones, most people with Apple phones, you do have iBooks. iBooks actually accepts EPUBs. EPUBs is one of the most universal um, electronic reader book um, applications you can use. Most of them like to use um, PDFs, which they don't give you all the functionality which that the EPUB has. So that's why we also chose EPUBs. But the thing what I want people to do is, if you still have an Android phone, you can still get an EPUB reader, an EPUB reader, and you can actually get those out the Google at the Google Store, and they mainly free. So just make sure you do that. But what I'm gonna be doing is fulfilling those back there to make sure we can get rid of the ones that because I'm allowed it to get rid of like a hundred of them for that $59 and that's what I'm going to be doing once I leave here and we're going to go back there to where we can take care of that and then after that we got to come back and delete that part over here because I know people will continually try to send it over but we're only doing it for the first 100 and then after that they have to go to to Amazon or Google so with that I appreciate everybody and their time. And uh, we will be picking this up later on this afternoon, which we'll be having um, uh, Deacon Micah, which he'll be bringing forth that one teaching. So with that, I say to each and every person, until next time, I say to each and every person,